work. Oh, that started. Um, hello and welcome back to the Aquanox Let's Play. I have decided to put the difficulty on easy, hoping that'll help. I'm not going to make you sit through this whole thing again, so... Well, yeah. See you. See you there. Your shore leave will be well earned. I did it. <laughs> oh god, I finally did it. <sighs> Oops, I unplugged something. My headphones. Oh god. It means I can continue the story, and it's really wrapping up. I think it might be three more missions after this. Yeah. Let's save, like, immediately. Nice place you have here, if you've given up on life. Hang on, stranger. You long to return here one day. They all do. I'm McGrath. McGrath, your aquarium tsunami booster is legendary. Desperate times call for desperate beverages. We're surrounded by cave dwellers, massive monsters, and politicians <laughs> run amok. What can you give me to take the edge off? Mm. The perfect drink would bring the brain to a standstill and keep it idling indefinitely. Let me think. The end of the world is knocking at the door. Hurry up, I've got it. This clear liquid is a gland secretion from the Vampyrotoitus infernalis, the vampire squid, which lives in the hot vents in the Pacific. If I add just a few drops of scopolamine, your consciousness will bounce, then drift into a trance full of dreams. That grass oasis of the foaming peace moments. Asante san, thank you again that I was allowed to fight with the raven. You were quite charming. How about the two of us go a few rounds <laughs> and kind of fight? Good grief, Flint. If testosterone was absorbent, you could dry up the whole Pacific. Well, I suppose we should thank God you weren't in a duel of wits. But still, you did give it your best, and you have my eternal thanks. You may also be interested to know that there have been some startling developments. What the hell hasn't been startling? Hell, if you can top that last battle, you win a prize. We have a new ally. Oh. They have the cold heart of a politician, the dark soul of an advertising executive, and they're as black as a miner's lungs. I'm speaking, of course, of the Bions. Ta-da! Bunch of crap. What? Take a look at the main screen. Three days ago, the Bions made contact with us. It was a computer voice. No human modulation. Ghost. Monotonous. They recognized the enormous threat to Aqua from the old ones and offered us their help. As a concession, they wanted a ceasefire so they could operate without opposition on the expectant battlefield near Neopolis. I don't trust those brain connected beasts at all. The government of Neopolis is crazy. We've talked it over with him, Top, and he thinks we ought to at least give it a try. We're not in any yeah, I'm sure they have the absolutely lives. no alternative motive. We've still got you. Well, you know what I think? I think we're making a disastrous mistake. Not a whoops mistake, like when you shoot the wrong guy, but the kind of mistake that could mean the end of Aqua. Flint, that's not the only news. A few weeks ago, I had the chance to explore the caverns of the Continental Slope on my own. The analysis of the data I collected revealed <laughs> Cutscene. Professor Charlotte Gilmore was a fascinating woman. She had researched the continental slopes of the tornado zone in her explorer ship, Nunnit, and now presented us with the results. She showed us the entrance to a world of caves where a 500 year old culture of technology and terror lurked. It was the world of the crawlers. The legends of the Tornado Zone spoke harshly about the crawlers. It was said they lived without light, using biological and chip implants, turning themselves into hideous patchwork fiends. 
They attacked stations, travelers, cargo ships, always leaving destruction in their wake, but no trace of victims on the battlefield. That gave credence to the legend that the crawlers were cannibals. Revolting and dangerous man-eaters wallowing in sediment. Gilmore had more guts than all of us put together. Alone, she'd explored the caves and tunnels of the crawler's world, pushing deep into the Earth's core. She showed us the way into that hell, and we could hear the screams of tortured victims reverberating with the grunts of their tormentors. When I saw the pictures, I had only one reaction. I wanted to see the crawlers dead, their colony of darkness and ruins, their grotesque forms spasming in a boiling and bloody sea. I wanted to look in the eye of their boss devil, Mad Sam Cohonan, and show him the darkest part of Deadeye Flint's soul. Gilmore's pictures became even eerier and more disturbing. It was like a dream filled with magic, fear, loneliness, and desperate need. I had never felt as abandoned as I felt there, deep in the Earth's mantle, surrounded by the most horrible blackness. Imprisoned, blind, deaf, and forgotten. From the remains we were looking at, the ancient civilization clearly had not lived underwater. Those caves had been dry as a bone right up until the South Pole melted. Gilmore claimed she was on the trail of a civilization that had ruled the surface 12,000 years ago. She believed they had retreated deeper and deeper into the crevices of the Earth, but she didn't know why. They took their energy from a mysterious source of inexhaustible power, she said, and they must have come into contact with powerful intraterrestrial beings. The Atlantides, as Gilmore called them, <laughs> lived in worship of their monstrous gods, called Old Ones in the most ancient of the surviving manuscripts. But the gods they worshipped were devils, and their worship led to the rule of torment and fear. At some point, the Atlantides managed to lure their monstrous gods into the gigantic subterranean caves, turning them into prisons. The legendary city of Bathopolis was said to lie down there, at the edge of the deepest point on the planet. Gilmore, sweet and crazy Charlotte, said we would find the entrance to the inner earth of the Atlantides there. This inner world was said to be a giant hollow sphere with its own sun, a fairy tale paradise even more beautiful than the surface world of old. Me, I had an absolute belief that the core of the Earth was full of fluid metals, its massive nickel-iron nucleus powering the good old dynamo we call the magnetic field. Once again, our death caused, and you move closer to your death. All of you, we're going to overrun you like the breath of a deer, like black angels of fetal. Your pain, your flat bones. Everything will belong to us. Our bones, baby, already taken the mother. And now you have a little brother. What's that you say? Your mother will arrive. Yes, and you are the pure essence of aqua. Beyond times, beyond army. We are our own death. Uh, do you write your own material? The aim of our efforts is to introduce the development of a dark destiny. In the end, they will be free seamen with powerful minds and strong bodies. And they will never see Aqua as a prison again. For Honan, you're just another criminal headed for a judge. <laughs> you want to be my judge? What's spreading my arms over the apples? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that, it's all just Rations, 
so I think I have access to the Skalar Howitzer, the final weapon of the game. So I'll talk to Commodore Sewell eventually. What are we gonna do if the squares keep getting bigger and fatter? Calm down. Your dopamine production is getting the better of you again. You need a strategy, and I can't think of anybody I'd rather consult than Gilmore. Her tactical suggestions during battle are well thought out, and she knows the squids better than anyone. What the hell with this? Is she gonna hold on to that Marax monster so we can beat the crap out of it? Where it is, Sauce's listening is located the beast even meaner than that. Heading directly for Neo Dopamus. <laughs> so, visiting the city of shining light and dark corruption again? You know, I wouldn't bet on how much longer that light is going to be shining. Why? Somebody forget to pay the bill? They're coming. The squids are moving on Neopolis, the center of Aquarian civilization. They're being attracted by the wide variety of food, by energy signatures by a thirst for revenge. It's not only the squids who want a vacation here. Have you heard about Mad Sam? Yeah, he and Sewell are going to use the chaos to try to seize power. You're definitely not my new assistant. <laughs> what do you want? Lady, it sure took you long enough to figure that out. I'm Flint, and I'm talking to you because scientists from Machina always have important information. What kind of information? mean about the squids? All I've heard is something about a sonar dome, but I'm sure you know about that already. What do you mean, a sonar dome? Come on, spill the sardines. Any scrap of information may just save what we like to think of as the civilized world. I think you're a cynic. Anyway, if you want to keep the beasts from being able to locate anything, including you, take out their sonar organ. It's a dome-shaped feature on the front of their heads. <laughs> From one madman to the next. Don't compare me to Mad Sam Cajonan. <laughs> His brain liquefied years ago. Sure, your motives are all noble and pure. If you're the voice of reason, we'll all be heating our homes with coal next. I should I just kill you right here and now? Because uh. of the men I have concealed here. Their microwave guns are focused on you at this moment. And your brain has already been warmed by two tenths of a degree. If you try anything, you will be cooked. Okay, then why don't you kill me and be done with it? Because I need you to eliminate Cohonan. <laughs> I have already recruited an excellent team of scientists from his ranks, so I have no further need of him. In contrast to his stupid theories of eternal night, I tend more toward the light and the surface. The only thing we really need is an efficient species of workers. And you're the man to breed a race of slaves, huh? Let's talk about you, Flint. You're a very efficient man. Join with me, and we'll step on the surface together. We will control the numerous satellites that still exist. And he who controls huh. the skies controls the world. Kind of sounds like Rala Crusade. Your ship against mine. Mad Sam is attacking the main fusion power plant with his Tursas and crawlers. If they take it, they own our energy resources. All right, I've had enough of this. Time to send the bad boys to hell. Don't just charge in guns blazing flint. Be smart. And for God's sake, be careful. If you make it, meet me on Deep Draft 1. We've got problems there, too. No, I think you should talk to that nice girl. Lisa, she's waiting for you, country. Mike, Lisa. Imagine that. Commander Ferrelli thinks you're a nice. He's never seen me when I wake up in the morning. Listen, kid, to be completely honest, I'm About Mad Sam and Sue? Yeah, them and the squids. I got a little discourse from Charlie Gilmore, and she said that 10,000 years ago, the squids were treated as gods. Kind of like the way everybody treats you, huh, Flint? <laughs> Lisa, I wasn't kidding about that dinner. I'd like to get to know you a little better. 
Well, the first thing you should know is that I carry a needle gun with me for protection. Besides, what would Mom say? The Grange? Yeah, she loves you like her own daughter. Exactly. She'd never let a brackish barracuda like you get near me. But that doesn't mean we can't sneak away sometime. Why didn't I think of that? Lisa, I'm glad you're around. Aw, oh, how cute and happy. Ah, Crocelle. Yes. <laughs> Maybe this is the second last mission. I think... I think this is the third last mission, but it could be the second last. I definitely remember the name of the last mission. <laughs> Power plant management reports fluctuations at the fusion center. The gravitation chamber is overloaded. The hole could collapse. Flint, see to it that the crawlers are driven away from the power plant. It must not fall into their hands. And see to the Tursus first. That's the Tursus. Go for that sonar dome. Damn it, you're too fast. I think the mythical creature Crocelle's based on is a well, I don't know how to pronounce, but it's a Dandian or however you But damn it. You've got to get that sonar dome. It's that dome thing on its head. There it is. I can't get a bug in. God damn it. I'm just gonna have to kill him. Or hide and recover my health. I think. The 
looks like everybody Come on, you Crystal, don't do this to me. Uh, I don't know what happened. More torpedoes. Oops, no, that's not what I wanted. I gotta bring more torpedoes. Gotta destroy the head shacks first. Power plant management reports fluctuations at the fusion center. <laughs> okay. Ah, <sighs> man. I, I remember being able to easily destroy the Sonar Dome in past games. But I couldn't get above Crocell for some reason. Uh, maybe because I had more torpedoes and destroyed the head shack first. Huh. Okay, let's do this. Purcell. Here we go. management reports fluctuations at the fusion center. The gravitation chamber is overloaded. The hole could collapse. Major the crawlers are driven away from the power plant. It must not fall into their hands. There's the process. That's um Sam Pollen and shit. What are doing? Is it because I moved too far away? <sighs> I mean, what's happening? Power plant management reports fluctuations at the fusion center. So what do I do?
destroy the head shacks from the safe. Respectable distance. That torpedo is going to the head shaft. This is bullshit. It's just circling around it. Purcell, or damaged. He's running away now. Hopefully, I won't miss to lose this. Uh oh, I've just caught something from Mad Sam. He's encouraging his guys to start Operation Present. Looks like an attack on the fusion power plant. Flint, I'll take a on it. You finish off that beast. Yes, finish off that beast. Yeah, I think this is the third last mission. I will kill the Duke Purcell.
Flint. I'm really sorry about Lisa, but the bomb at the power plant still has priority. Forget Cohorten, or there isn't going to be anything to remember. Oh, maybe this was the second last mission. And the next one's the last one. So yeah, this is dead. Should I do the last mission now? Hopefully it won't bug and I'll have to repeatedly do it, but... Uh, you know, I could just get the final cutscene from YouTube. <laughs> you know, if I can't finish the final mission. Because once I finish this and I'm easy, and machine for pigs, I can start a brand new let's play. Oh, save. Wait a minute. Hmm. I'm sorry about Lisa. I want you to know that we will take care of her family. Who has family? I got to cool out. Sue is dead and I still hate that rat. Your hatred will make it difficult for Lisa to go into the other world. Let go. We have to take care of ourselves now, Flint. Mad Sam was sighted in Neapolis. My men still think that he wants to sabotage a fusion power plant, in spite of everything. That monster won't give up. There won't be any surrenders in this one, Ferelli. Hey, Dana! Thanks for turning fool into setting. You would have become too dangerous for me soon enough. Besides, having that guy around was a real pain in the butt. Where are you? How about we settle this like men? Or don't you have it in you? <laughs> that good girl. That was me. <laughs> you wouldn't tie yourself to the How did you tell me? You'll get a better understanding of how my brain works when I have you in front of my guns. I will turn your power plant into scrap long before you get the chance. I don't know why I'm compulsively saving. You look a little worried. I am. When we brought the crew over. Now I'm fighting the battle of Neapolis, and I'm ruined.